How do we prepare for a CFI check ride? And then by the way, how do we prepare our learners for their first check rides? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, M0A.com. You are listening to, don't tell anybody, my favorite podcast out of all of them. I'd say it's the CFI, the Certificated Flight Instructor Podcast. You know we produce four podcasts, the Private Pod Podcast, the Instrument Pod Podcast, the Commercial Pod Podcast, and of course what you're listening to right here, the CFI Podcast. You wanna hear something else fun? I've been sharing this a lot lately. I just learned it not too terribly long ago. All four podcasts are in the top 25 all time in the aviation category on iTunes. That's pretty cool. So we own four of the top 25 spots all time. What, uh, what an honor. And even the CFI podcast, again, this, these are very niche-based podcasts. As, as you can imagine, Private Pilot gets the most listens out of everything. This one gets the least amount of listens. But it's, it's fascinating to me. First off, those of you that do listen to this, and, and you come from all walks of life, not all of you even want to be CFIs. You just want to learn more. And I find that fascinating to me. Uh, and it's even more fascinating, the CFIs who just take the time to be here. I say this every episode, um, and, and hopefully affirmations are your thing, but it's incredible to me that CFIs who are willing to give up time out of their day to learn more. Like that's, that's pretty intriguing to me, that you would do such a thing. I mean, if every CFI in the country would be willing to continue to learn, we wouldn't need the NTSB, right? It, uh, for aviation at least. It's fascinating to me. Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling. We're here to talk about two things. We're here first to talk about your CFI check right for you. And then I want to talk about how to prepare your learners. Remember, that's our new word for student. Not our new word, the FAA's new word. How to prepare for their check rides as well. Let's start with you, though. Because perhaps you saw the Tuesday video where I dropped the stats, and again, that they roughly say 80% first time failure rate for a CFI check ride. Gee, thanks, Jason. That was really great of you to share. I, I don't know the exact data. It, it's, it's high up there, though. It's in this, it's up there. It may be 80%, it may be 75%. I, I don't know. I know I could easily find that data and will to back it up a little bit for you, but let me just share with you it's. It's up there and it's a hard check ride. Because like I shared in the Tuesday video on YouTube and Facebook, and if you haven't seen that yet, I encourage you, I, if you're listening to this later in life, this is May 2021, head over to the MSRA YouTube channel or in mock check ride May for the year of 2021 and go find the CFI uh, video to help you out with that. You'll know what I'm, I'm sharing, what I'm talking about. Um, and how we can prepare for the CFI check ride. And the big part of that was just make your own lesson plans for goodness sake. That's the biggest part of it for me. Well, at least there's, there's more to it than that. You know, preparing for that CFI check ride, you've heard me say it's really two check rides in one. I'm, if you're watching this as a video, I'm holding up the private pilot check ride book and the commercial pilot check ride book because they, it's kind of two check rides. Teach me hypoxia at a private pilot level, now teach to me at a commercial pilot level. Same topic, a different level of understanding, a different level of teaching. And that can be a, a unique challenge to our learners as well and, and to us to teach such a thing. Wow, can we do a whole podcast on being a CFI, helping another person become a CFI? Like who, show of hands, who wants something like that? That poses an interesting challenge as well. But let's start with you. Then let's go to your learners and let's end with you being the CFI teaching the CFI because that doesn't happen all that often. Not every CFI goes on to create more CFIs. That's a niche within a niche sometimes. But how do you best prepare for your CFI check ride? As I alluded to on Tuesday, just to recap, you need to make your own lesson plans. Seriously, you cannot go into this without creating your own lesson plans. You will, I, I don't know how else to explain it, you will, gosh, I hate to say you will fail, that, that sounds so negative. You will not be set up for success. How about we say it that way? You will not be set up for success if you go into this thing having not created your own lesson plans, but it goes deeper than that. What I didn't get into in the Tuesday video that I have the opportunity to get into here is in your lesson plans, rather than grabbing the FAA's images, I want you to hand draw. I don't care if you're not an artist. 
I want you to draw your own images. Allow me to explain. Can you draw your airplane's fuel system? Heck, I think you should draw the electrical system. Call me crazy, but at least draw a, a, you know, a very basic diagram and write flaps and write bus one and bus two because a question is what's on avionics bus one what's on avionics bus two do you even have multiple buses in your aircraft you may not if it's an older aircraft can i draw the electrical system the fuel system the vacuum system if you have one can you my propeller governor system if you have such a thing with my fly weights and show my fly weights in an overspeed in an underspeed configuration can you show me all of these things? Because let me tell you something. If you just go on the internet and look for a propeller um, system image, you will find it. And you'll copy it from Google Images. Forget about the copyright, probably. Who cares about that, you may say. And paste it in there. And it's, not, it's just your lesson plan. It's not a big deal, right? It's not like you're, this is for public consumption. And you put that in there, but copy paste does not allow you to learn it. There is something about sitting down and having to draw the system out that forces you to learn it in a new way. Maybe you're a kinesthetic learner and that just clicks with you. Maybe you're a visual learner and that just kicks with you that much more. I, I don't know what it is, but that is what allows you to learn at a deeper level. Maybe you're an auditory learner, and that's why you're listening to this as a podcast in the first place, right? That's why the audiobooks are so well suited for you. And even the private and the commercial and the instrument for Double Eye eventually, audiobooks will serve you to help you learn and understand things at, at that higher level. So, what am I saying here? Hey, in your lesson plans, draw your own figures. When I was going to become a helicopter pilot, and as of this record, I just have my private and my instrument in rotorcraft. It's my aspiration now just to jump to ATP next from here. But even at the private pilot checkride level, there are so many new things. I mean, helicopter aerodynamics are so different. There's new terminology, terminologies, um, you know, dissymmetry of lift and, and loss of tail rotor effectiveness and all these different factors and buzzwords and aerodynamic principles I just wasn't familiar with coming from the fixed wing environment. I went in and I drew them. I just drew pictures of helicopters and aerodynamics and rotor systems and everything else. And I prepared for a private pilot rotorcraft check ride like it was a CFI check ride because I made lesson plans, I drew things out, and guess what? The examiner loved it. He even said, wow, I've never seen anybody do this for a private pilot check ride. And I said, listen, I'm a flight instructor in the fixed wing environment, and this is how I teach. So for a private pilot check ride, I'm, I'm teaching and explaining these things to you and showing you that I know them. I want to understand them at a level where I can teach them to you. So allow me to teach you just for a second. And again, passed, did my private and my instrument check ride the same day. That was not recommended. That was a, a marathon day. It felt like my CFI check ride back for a fixed wing because that was a four or five hour check ride as well. And that's something else you need to know and understand that this will be a marathon check ride. Mine was over two days and yours probably should be too. Very few people can do a four or five hour ground oral exam and then go hop in the airplane and fly for two hours on the hobs, right? That doesn't include pre-flight time, post-flight time. I mean, it is just such a marathon day. I would recommend making it two days because it's, I remember I went, uh, many of you may not know this, I actually went to checkride school to become a designated pilot examiner. I actually never went through, I was, it was just a matter of paperwork as to finishing it up to become a checkride examiner and um, it just didn't fit with my career goals at the time. I mean, M0A was certainly not as big as it is now, uh, but it was growing and I, I would argue if I became a checkride examiner, M0A would not be. Uh, the 33 person company that it is uh, that it is today and continue to grow because a uh, check ride examiner is very much a full time job. But you know, I learned so much just by going to check ride school. And I remember one thing they said they said, listen, if you are doing a CFI check ride in less than four hours, that's going to set off a red flag in our system. They literally said that they want to see no one. They, I think they worded it literally, it is not possible to do a CFI check ride in less than four hours, so we don't want to see that. I mean, that's what they're teaching the DPEs. We don't want to see it less than four hours. So you better believe four hours, 
gets them in trouble. So it's probably gonna be more like five hours, six hours. I mean, comment below if you've done a CFI check ride, how many hours was your CFI check ride? Because they are measured in hours, four plus usually over multiple uh, days typically as well. So just be mindful of preparing for that. But I am telling you the crux of all of this comes down to your lesson plans, creating them, creating them yourself, creating the images, drawing them out yourself. Even if you go to Google and Google images to just get an idea of what they should look like and then hand drawing them yourself and adding your notes and your notations and everything else. This is not a waste. Let me tell you something. Your lesson plans you create, this is going to follow you for a very, very long time. Seriously. I still to this day reference my, my original CFI lesson plans that have to be, I mean, they're, they're, they're not quite 20 years old yet, but they're getting close to 20 years old now. Um, I've been at this a long, I've been flying 20 years, not a CFI 20 years, so they're not that old. But they're getting old, and I still reference them here uh, to this day. Single eye and double eye lesson plans, and MEI lesson plans for that matter. It is... Um, they are a gift because it's great to go back to where was I thinking in that season when you're so engrossed because sometimes it's it's easy just to say a good pilot is always learning and not always do it yourself, right? You'll find that. You'll spend so much time helping other learners learn that um, you don't make time for yourself and you have to make time for yourself and going back to reference those is a great thing. So that's briefly about you. Let's now spend... Let's now spend a little bit of time talking about preparing your learners for check rides. Wow, that's a, that's a big thing. And then CFIs, preparing CFIs for CFI check rides or aspiring CFIs. There's that old saying, oh, your CFI wouldn't have signed you off if you weren't ready. It's true. I mean, no one's going to sign anyone off if they didn't think they were ready. No one wants to set someone up for failure. No one's that evil. By the way, CFIs... The FAA does look at our past fail rate. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's uh, some magical algorithm that uh, you may get a knock on the door one day if you have set amount of failures and, and silly ones at that. So just watch and be mindful of that. It, it's something you need to, to keep an eye on most certainly. And you're, of course, you're not going to set someone up for failure that you know they're going to fail, but let me sign them off anyways. It'll be a humbling experience. That's not the right attitude either, is it? How do you prepare for this? You, here's the secret. You don't prepare them for the check ride. You prepare them to be a safe real world pilot. I, I am dead serious. And this goes against anything you've ever heard. Don't prepare them for the check ride. Prepare them to be a safe real world pilot. Yes, they need to do steep turns and slow flight and landings to the highest and exceed any ACS guidelines. But if you are just preparing them to nail their maneuvers, preparing them to do a good fake cross country, right? Because that's all it is, is you, you barely make it up and you go, listen, they're gonna diverge you to this airport, so get ready. You're, and you get, uh, gosh, again, I, I reminisce back to my college days, like because we oftentimes had the same check ride examiner. There was literally like a gouge going around the school at the, and my, I went to a great school, but this is just human nature. There was a gouge. Hey, he loves to ask questions about uh, systems, so make sure you really know the arrows systems. He loves to talk about the aero fuel system, so make sure you know it forwards and backwards. Like, you're preparing for a check ride at that point with a specific human. I want to prepare to be a safe, real world pilot. So let me tell you something. If you find yourself preparing for a particular examiner or just preparing like, hey, they're big, they're sticklers on this or, or whatever, you're missing the point. The point is to make them safe when they're flying with their spouse, with their kids, with their best friend, or when there's 200 paying customers behind them. That, that's what you're preparing them for. Yes, we want, everybody wants their learners to pass their knowledge test, their written test, to pass their check rides. But you do that through teaching real world. It's experienced based learning. Don't just teach them what's in the book. 
Don't just teach them this, this rote memorization of this big old far aim. Like, far aim's an awesome, awesome book, right? We can thumb through it and everything else and, and dog ear it and tab it and highlight it. But if you don't understand it, and then more importantly, if you can't apply it, if your learners can't apply it, you're just teaching rote memorization at this point. Real world flying. Team, that's a whole podcast in itself. Please remind me of this, that we need to do a whole, and we, we've been speaking about it a lot. Last, last month we spoke about it, but how do we share more about real world flying? That's what we want to work and focus on. So um, let's, let's wrap on, on this note here as well. How do we then, what happens when we have our first CFI candidate? Man, this is where you experience share. This is where you share on your mistakes, the thing, just like I'm doing here with you. I am thankful someone screwed up. Uh, as I share, I share this on Tuesday, if you don't know the story, my old flight school, uh, again, I was in a collegiate aviation program, everybody just kind of shared CFI lesson plans. And thank, I was coming up watching this happen and eventually the check ride examiner pulled everybody aside and said, listen, I see the same lesson plans every single CFI check ride, and I'm failing every single person until I start seeing original and unique CFI lesson plans. Everyone was just sharing. No one was really learning anything. I said, whoa, that's a wake-up call. Good. And I was, I was just starting my CFI. I'm thinking, all right, this is awesome. I'm glad this is happening now. Good timing. Because I, 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 can, uh, I can learn from this, and I plan on making my own lesson plans anyways. You can experience share. You, you, can, you can share your mistakes on becoming a CFI, your mistakes as a CFI. And most importantly, you need to be a great listener and a great question asker. Help your learners dig deeper. Four types of hypoxia, what do you mean? You, you have to ask these kinds of questions that keep the learners talking. When you are helping someone become a CFI, you should do about 5% of the talking. Really? What do you mean? What? What? We have that requirement? Why? A lot of why, a lot of what type questions. Keep them talking. Let them dig themselves into their own pitfalls, as we call them, right? To show what they don't know and expand further and deeper on that. Anyways, listen, uh, CFIs, you are the lifeblood of aviation. I, I want to hire every single one of you. See, I, I mean it. It's outstanding. Speaking of that M0A, some fall 2021 hiring is my goal. Be watching for that. I mean it. I'm not, I'm not joking. Seriously, be watching for that. So M0A Nation, though, you are outstanding. You are a blessing. Thank you so much for everything that you do. If there is anything, anything at all uh, this week, this month, this year we can do for you or for your learners, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you.